TV. I'm here today with Representative Steve Israel, Democrat of Suffolk County. Congratulations on being reelected, and also Thank congratulations you. on being named the chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us. So let's go. Let's start off right with the uh, the news of the day. Uh, the, after this uh, mass murder in Arizona, do you feel that your safety is at stake if you change the way you make public appearances? I reject the premise that members of Congress need to uh, dig moats around them or uh, retreat into the bunkers. A representative democracy requires members of Congress to be accessible to their constituents. And so this past weekend, uh, I held a Congress on your corn uh, and invited my constituents because I wanted them to know that we are open for business and we will not allow the insane actions of one deranged man with a Glock uh, to affect the accessibility that uh, I have with my constituents. Are you convinced that this is one lone deranged individual? Or was, was he motivated? So many people have said by the tenor of the conversation, or is it just his own delusions that led him to this? I mean, obviously the facts are still coming out. Yeah, it's going to take a while. So it's, going to take, it's going to take some time to, to, to establish motive. And, and, you know, look, I, I'm more interested in, uh, in ensuring that the, the American people can return to a process by which they can disagree in more agreeable ways. We are entitled to our opinions. I have my opinion. You have your opinion. We all have opinions. And we need to express our opinions without necessarily vilifying one. Now, as you look across the map, as you obviously have to do it in your new job, uh, the blue and red map, uh, where would you see the most opportunity uh, in the next election to pick up seats, and where do you see the most the biggest battleground to hold on to once you have? Well, uh, part of my job as the chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is to uh, help win 25 seats. Uh, that's what Democrats need to Retake take back the majority uh, and uh, continue the work that we've been doing to uh, support small businesses. Uh, so that they can innovate and become uh, more entrepreneurial and create jobs uh, to support the middle class uh, and to uh, tackle the, the debts that we have, the deficits that we have. So we need 25 seats to, to reach that goal. Uh, 14 seats in America currently represented by a Republican voted for uh, Senator Kerry in 2004 and President Obama in 2008. So we know that of the 25 seats we need to take back the House, 14 uh, have a strong, robust Democratic presence. 61 seats in America currently represented by a Republican incumbent uh, voted for President Obama. Uh, so there are opportunities in those seats as well. What's your pitch to the Jewish community, Jewish voters, to reinforce that bond that Jews have with the Democratic Party? Uh, I think I have a unique perspective on this because before I found politics, I was deeply involved in the Jewish community. Uh, I was a professional with the American Jewish Congress. I started uh, and co-founded the very first pro-Israel political action committee on Long Island called Big Pack, to support candidates around the country who were supportive of Israel. I founded uh, and organized, before I went to Congress, uh, a think tank called the Institute on the Holocaust and the Law, uh, which studied the role of lawmakers and judges in Nazi Germany uh, in accelerating and amplifying the Holocaust. And so I believe that I have a unique perspective. And that perspective leads me to believe that Democrats are a better deal for the American Jewish community than Republicans on so many areas, not just when it comes to uh, support for Israel. Uh, I, under a Democratic uh, majority in the House of Representatives, passed uh, an amendment to the appropriations process uh, that would have uh, restrained any funds from going to any federal agency that violated the Iran Sanctions Act. That was a Democratic initiative, passed by a Democratic House of Representatives. Tough on Iran, tough on the regime in Iran, the population of Iran is uh, fairly friendly, but the regime is dangerous. Uh, so we showed that ability to be tough on Iran, to stand with Israel. I've been to Israel more times than I, I can count. Uh, but at the same time, uh, enhance historic American Jewish values on things like education. Uh, Republicans have said they want to dismantle the Department of Education. I think we need to continue making sure that the federal government is making investments in our children's education. Improving accessibility and affordability for college. Republicans have said that they want to cut back uh, on the amount of funding uh, that goes to making sure that every kid can afford to go to college. I think that the middle class wants to make it easier to send their kids to college. And so those are examples of, of how the Democratic Party stands by uh, our, our historic support for Israel, which is a, an American strategic interest, and at the same time uh, responds to the concerns of middle class Jewish families throughout the United States. Are you spearheading a particular campaign directed to Jewish voters? We are. The, uh, one of the things that I've done uh, is uh, we started uh, a uh, Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, uh, American Jewish uh, Outreach Council. 
uh, and uh, Congressman uh, Ted Deutsch from California will be co-chairing that, uh, Congressman Shelley Berkeley uh, from Nevada, and Congressman Adam Schiff uh, from California. And the purpose of that is to make sure that we're communicating effectively with American Jewish voters, uh, educating them about what we're doing, and most important, listening to uh, American Jewish leaders, activists, and voters uh, so that we're able to take their concerns and priorities and uh, effectuate them. Well, speaking of uh, messages from American Jewish leaders, uh, you were involved, uh, you were a, a chairman at one point for a committee uh, for J Street. J Street has become somewhat... Well, I wasn't uh, chairman. Uh, 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 honorary I was, committee I was, I was chairman. on that honorary committee. Honorary committee yeah. for yeah. J Street. You were associated yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's become sort of a flashpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel the role of J Street is, uh, how is it, what is it accomplishing? And, and as a member of Congress, do you feel that Congress is getting mixed messages from hearing from two different lobbies with different particular uh, points of view? Well, it's, a, it's an excellent question. Uh, two responses. Uh, one, I, I have my differences with J Street. I have my differences with lots of different organizations and associations. I have differences with my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, no two people agree on everything. Uh, and uh, I, I do believe, however, that when an uh, organization uh, under the Constitution is expressing its viewpoint, its opinion, uh, is serving on a host committee uh, at a program that uh, that organization is having uh, is, uh, is, is, is responsible, and certainly not irresponsible. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, we ought to encourage diversity of opinion. Uh, opinions actually make us stronger so long as they're, they're expressed in a responsible way. How would you characterize the Obama administration's relationship with Israel? And by that I mean the country. Yeah, so. not, not me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I've had some, uh, some pronounced differences and disagreements with the uh, Obama administration uh, right. on the issue of settlements, for example. Personally, uh, I uh, don't believe that the issue of settlements uh, should define the U.S.-Israeli relationship. Uh, if the, uh, anybody who believes that uh, settlements are wrong, uh, that settlements uh, are, uh, are not helpful, uh, to me, the issue is very simple. Uh, Palestinians ought to just negotiate with Israel, show up, air your grievances. Every time uh, Arabs and Palestinians have come to the table to negotiate with Israel, Israel has made concessions. And so if you believe that con the settlements are not helpful, negotiate. Uh, and I have stated to the President uh, on several occasions that if he doesn't believe settlements are, are, are helpful, then he ought to just put the issue on the tables and see if the Palestinians will show up. The problem is the Palestinians showed up, but they waited nine months. Uh, to show up, and by that point it was almost uh, impossible uh, to come to a, a compromise on that issue. Uh, I think the bottom line here in the U.S.-Israeli relationship, what is absolutely critical, uh, is that if we expect Israel, or if we desire that Israel compromise, that we have an obligation to watch its back. Looking ahead uh, to the session, what legislation do you see, what action involving Israel, or involving the Middle East in, in general? Do you see coming up that you're concerned Well, about? one thing that I'm, I'm deeply concerned about is under the new Republican majority, there's some talk about uh, carving out uh, Israel's uh, annual Eric appropriations. Wants yeah, Eric wants to do that. Carve it out and, uh, and put it up for its own vote. Uh, that would run contrary uh, to, uh, to uh, the investment that the United States uh, has made uh, in Israel uh, and uh, in, uh, in Egypt in a, in a, in a peace process. Uh, and uh, I think it, it is very risky and very dangerous, uh, and it is contrary to the opinion of so many American Jewish organizations, uh, so that concerns me. But secondly, I've been very deeply uh, in involved in uh, the issue of uh, Iran. Uh, again, 70% of the Iranian population uh, is, uh, is modern, is moderate, uh, is, uh, and, and fundamentally disagrees with the regime. The regime is reckless. The regime wants to develop nuclear weapons. Now, uh, one of the uh, untold stories of the relationship between the United States and Israel right now is on intelligence cooperation. And as a result of almost unprecedented intelligence cooperation, uh, Iran has had significant problems developing its nuclear uh, capability. Uh, I want to continue uh, working on that. Uh, I want to continue uh, ensuring that Israel has uh, the strategic tools that it needs. Uh, we have provided them with uh, record-breaking levels of foreign military financing in a democratic administration, in a democratic Congress, $250 million increase in foreign military financing, uh, radar systems and weapon systems, and I want to continue focusing on that because that is critical to Israel's strength and survival. Now, um, 
Back in 2003, you voted uh, against the majority of your party, at least, uh, to support the war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back, it's still going on now. Do you have any regrets about that? Yes. Uh, I, vote, I cast that vote, quite bluntly, uh, because the President of the United States, George Bush, and the Vice President of the United States, and the Director of the CIA, and the Secretary of Defense, Rumsfeld, uh, sat at a conference table with me and several other members of Congress and said there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. We would never attack Iraq if we didn't believe there were weapons of mass destruction. They are there, and to keep our country safe, we must uh, use military means. Uh, and I voted uh, to support that. And of course, had I known then what I know now, I would have voted differently. What are some of the issues that you hear about in your district? And uh, is there anger? Do you feel anger? Well, there's, there's certainly anxiety, and, and there's a good bit of anger. Uh, people go to bed every night worried about uh, their jobs, and if they have jobs, they're worried about their paychecks, and if they have jobs and paychecks, they're worried about their home values. This is a, 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 a historic uh, economic challenge to our country and, and to all Americans. Uh, and so I think we need to really be focusing on job creation, uh, on supporting small businesses as the innovators and entrepreneurs of our economy to create more jobs. Uh, I am on a mission. If a guy named Israel can be evan evangelical, I am on an evangelical mission mm -hmm. to create a new clean tech economy. Mm -hmm. Because the biggest challenge we have as a country, the overriding challenge that we have as a nation, is our dependence on foreign oil. I spend the vast majority of my time trying to figure out how to reduce that dependence on foreign oil. And by doing that, we strengthen Israel, we strengthen ourselves, we create jobs. So that is my obsession in Congress. And uh, have you seen any anti-Semitism? You know, have you gotten letters? Have you gotten hate mail? Um, I can't say that, I've, uh, that I'm aware of any specifically anti-Semitic uh, letters that, that, that I've received. Uh, there are there's a, quite a, a steady volume of, of just anti-government letters. Uh, and, uh, and the healthcare debate uh, really kind of amplified that. Uh, and uh, so I'm, nothing good can come of the tragedy in Tucson. But if there's any consolation at all, it's, it's maybe we've been jarred into uh, kind of recalibrating uh, the, the value uh, on, on the debate. Uh, is there any, any kind of um, impetus toward gun control? Do you feel any, any kind of new traction for the issue now? I, you know, I don't think that what happened in Tucson uh, ought to turn into a debate uh, on, uh, on gun control or, or, or gun safety. We should not use that uh, as, uh, you know, as a political debate. Having said that, I have an obligation to be honest with, uh, with you and, and the people I represent. I have always been a, a, a supporter of responsible gun ownership, mm -hmm. but with that responsibility comes common sense gun safety issues. Uh, a mentally deranged, criminally insane person with a police record who was kicked out of his college for having a violent streak was able to walk into a gun store, buy a gun, buy extender clips. Uh, I don't know of any reasonable person who would say that the system worked in that case. And so we ought to continue to find common sense ways uh, of uh, reducing uh, the access of people uh, like this one uh, to dangerous weapons. Do you see any, any kind of um, progress in, in Congress toward a bill that would, would address that, which would make it more difficult, for, at least for mentally ill people? I think there should the be. stronger background checks and waiting periods. Yeah, and look, I, I, I support all of that, uh, but I will tell you that uh, already, for example, uh, the congressman uh, next to my congressional district, Peter King, uh, offered a resolution that I probably would not have supported, but he offered a resolution that said that uh, you can't have foot, firearms yeah. within a thousand feet, and almost immediately John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, condemned it. Mm -hmm. Now, I would have voted against it because I don't think a congressman should be entitled to any more protection than anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact is that even something you know that I'm sure Congressman King regarded as common sense and non-controversial was immediately rejected by the Republican leadership. So they, they won't be open to any kind of... Uh, I, 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 they don't invite me to the meetings, so I can't tell you for sure, but uh, based on that, it seems to me that uh, they're not exactly open and embracing of even a, a debate on it. Congressman, Congressman Steve Israel, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks.